At what point did you apply for 8A? Or what made you even like go that route to, to considering the 8A program? There was a, a woman in my industry, uh, as you know, I'm, I'm a white woman, so uh -huh. it, it doesn't really preclude minority. Although right. a woman in my industry had gotten it and she was a white woman right. and she, she had based her uh, narrative on gender discrimination. Sure, of course. And so I was like, well, you know, I'm in Utah. I'm a software engineer. I make 10 grand less than every one of right. my male counterparts. Right. And I'm a good writer. So what the heck? I'll just try it. You know, mm -hmm. so I did. And um, there was, you know, a few glitches. And, sure. and but then I ended up getting the 8A status. Wow. Now, how, now, how far out was now, that from when you, like, made the transition? It was about two years. Okay. 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 Two to three years. Okay. So um, now I ahead. didn't know what to do with it. Okay, right. Um, hey, there you go. That's my <laughs> now, now. That's my. That's the most common uh, thing. Is I, I try and tell people, but you go ahead. Go ahead. Keep continuing, please. Yeah. So I didn't know what to do with it. It sat in a corner for an entire year. I wasted an entire year of my oh, eight A. Can you imagine? It is. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity and the very first year I did nothing with wow. it. Let me ask you this, sorry to interrupt. How did you maintain between that first contract and this and the eight A stuff? Um I was a you know, one person consultant. Okay, so you kept getting subcontracts from the from different people? Yes. Okay. I did. Okay. Okay. So I mean I kept working, I kept writing software. Okay. And so after a year Another, I call them blast from my past, but they're wonderful people in my life that uh, came to me, uh, you know, a little larger company. I had been one of their original employees and asked me if I would be interested in a mentor prodigy with them, mm -hmm. mentor prodigy agreement. Right. And I lucked out. I hear some of these other people talk about their mentor prodigy and how they're just a check mark that's, you know, Right. Put baby in the corner and like, let's forget that she's over there, you know? Mm -hmm. But I lucked out. I had a mentor that showed me how to write a proposal, how to set up my accounting system, uh, introduced me to their customers. We did work for many, many, many years together. Wow. Wow, that's fantastic. That's incredible. You know, I don't know if you lucked out or not. I think that a lot of times what I've heard is that the people don't know their mentor. And the mentor doesn't know the protege. So, you know, they, they don't have any history to build upon. And so, you know, it's more of a, it's not really a mentor protege. It's more of like a financial arrangement per se than one of learning and building the business and, you know, produce, like teaching you how to fish as opposed to just, you know, catching the fish for you and splitting them up. So from my experience, that's what I've seen. Right. Yeah. You know, they tell you. To not really have a, another mentor that's a small business. Correct. That you really should get a large business. Right. But I had another small business and we did great. Oh, so, so your mentor I was a small it, business. Yeah, but mid-size maybe. Okay, okay. You know, but not large. Right. Okay. Wow. So you had a mentor. So, so you sat for a year. You found a mentor, and the mentor taught you proposal writing and setting up your books and how to navigate the program. Yes. Okay. And then we started to compete, and we, you know, we did very well for you know several years. Oh wow! So once you established the like the mentor protege, was that the second year of your eight A or the third year? Do you remember between the between the second and third? Okay. Okay. And would you say that's the time when your business started to take off? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I would have just still been sitting in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me ask you this. We have a lot of people with 8A and I'm sure, you know, the same thing. They probably ask all the time is they've got 8A. They don't know how to navigate it. They don't know what to do with it. What would you tell them? I would tell them to go get a mentor. Okay. You know, and, and be specific about the mentor you're looking for. 
and interview them just like you would interview an employee. Mm. Make sure it's a good fit. Mm. Interesting. Now, you do, I know you do software. What other types of services does Dinah Grace offer or that you offer like through the 8A program? Well, one of the things that I would tell a new 8A is to find a niche and focus on that niche. Because what I did was, oh, you need an 8A? Oh, I'm your 8A. I, I'm, I can do it. I can do it. You know, so I did all sorts of things. I've mm -hmm. done construction. I've done demolition. I've done water quality studies. I've done, you know, we've done engineering services, environmental services. Mm. We've done cybersecurity. I mean, you name it. And we probably had one small piece of it, right? Right, right, right. But what that does is you've got too many avenues to go down. Okay. Whereas if, if you find a niche, you can focus on those government customers that do that niche and then get to know them, reach out to them, and you have a much better opportunity to get that 8A award.